Hello and welcome back to the Justin Benavides channel. Today we're talking Intel Corporation, ticker symbol INTC. As a disclaimer, this is not investment advice. This is just a research video that I put together meant to be educational as well as entertaining. We're going to take a look at a few different news clippings and articles surrounding the company. We're going to hear from the CEO, Pat Gelsinger, and then we're going to take a look at the stock. Thank you for your time. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It really helps people find the channel. Please enjoy. as the stewards of Moore's Law will be relentless in our path to innovate Moore's Law alive and very well. I am just really thrilled that we have the opportunity to take this great icon of a company forward as never before. Our best days are in front of us. IDM 2.0 is our evolution. Historic investment for Ohio, one of the largest investment in semiconductor manufacturing in American history. Every aspect of human existence is becoming more digital. Demand for semiconductors is truly unprecedented. Intel Foundry Services will open up the Intel fabs for the industry with leading process technology, a wide range of our and third-party IPs. We have a clear path for the next decade of innovation to go to one and well beyond. We will be relentless in our path to innovate with the magic of silicon and we have to control and manage our supply chains. Introducing the all-new 12th Gen Intel Core processors, Intel's most significant shift in x86 architecture in more than a decade. The Intel Xeon platform is the foundation. It is the most pervasive platform on the market, delivering everything customers need. As gamers, we expect more. But as Intel, we want to deliver more. You know, today we have mobile eye technology being used by 29 automakers. More than 88 million cars are on the road today. So we're really on a mission to let those who build networks take control to be able to program them for themselves. We're going to give them the hardware and the software tools to do that. Today's developers are discovering leading edge concepts and creating the future. We can and we will do better. Most just companies in America. I've seen the technical work and progress of our team. I have full confidence that Intel is in a very strong competitive position and our best days are ahead. Okay, we are here on the Intel Corporation Seeking Alpha page. For me, uh, it helps just to take a look at some of the numbers. We see the 52-week range, the day range. Um, the day range is traded on the higher side. On the 52-week range is traded on the lower side, or um, it's approaching its mid-52-week range. The high is 68.49, and the lower on the 52-week range is about $43. Um, this is an older play for sure. This is um, an older technology company. However, we're going to hear from Pat Gelsinger here on the next uh, uh, couple slides. But take a look at this revenue. It's been hovering around the uh, the 75 to 80 billion mark uh, year in year out. Its estimate for this year uh, 75. Next year is 78 billion. And you know it's pretty steady. And I would like to see. Uh, some newer implementation, some newer blood, which we get from Pat Gelsinger. Take a look at this earnings per share. The earnings per share is they're a little bit more conservative. However, they have beaten them year in and year out um, as far as the actual, uh, right? So that th this these types of things for me, it's what I like about Seeking Alpha is that it's a go-to whenever I'm researching some just some key fundamentals uh, when it comes to a company. Um, but moving forward, I would like to see more out of this company for sure. You know, and I don't think it's too much to ask as a shareholder. But we'll take a look at the dividend it's been paying out uh, for the past 19 years. It's been growing. So it is a dividend play. It is uh, part of an income strategy, at least for me. So uh, again, yeah, it's being held mostly by institutions and by um by public, so common stock held is just primarily between those two types of holders. So, 
Let's take a look and let's listen to Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of Intel. G is increasingly central to every aspect of humanity and semis are needed for everything digital. We believe this is driven by what I've called the four technology superpowers. First, 4,000 and fours everywhere, right? Ubiquitous compute. This thing called microprocessor is now permeating every aspect. Second, infinite infrastructure from the largest clouds to high capabilities, low latency edge devices. Pervasive connectivity, everyone and everything is becoming connected. And finally, making sense of it all with artificial intelligence. And those superpowers are enabling us, and as you saw in Raj's presentation this morning, you know, that it's creating this opportunity, this challenge to continue to create compute opportunities where we're simulating every aspect of human existence, fully immersive, digital experience, intelligent avatars, digital twins, all of these, you know, these experiences. There's an insatiable demand for compute. And that insatiable demand for compute is going to require general purpose compute like we do, but also graphics, immersion experience, I.O. capabilities, accelerators. This demand is insatiable. And we believe that it's foundational and will change the structure of humanity and the semiconductor industry. And we estimate that to be a trillion dollar market by 2030, the doubling of the semiconductor industry over the next decade. And we are uniquely positioned to capitalize on that. Let's take a look at this article from Decrypt Intel Inville's new Bitcoin mining chip and 3600 watt mining rig. And there's also evidence to suggest that Intel is already working on its sec second generation mining chip. So I'm not going to go through the entire article, but um, the computing giant uh, is taking a look at the crypto mining sector and that's becoming uh, definitely a sector uh, as of lately bitcoin mining companies have been taken off the past couple of years and so um, we're going to hear uh, from the coin desk they're going to talk a little bit about uh, this article and more specifically the the strategy of how they're doing it this is really interesting although it might fly under the radar for some people we have intel saying that they are going to launch uh, a line of uh, specific crypto mining chips. And uh, I would focus on two things here. One is they are saying that they will be a thousand times more efficient than chips currently on the market, which I find fascinating. Um, but more to the point, that will have some real impacts on Bitcoin mining, hash power and distribution, as well as Ethereum. I, I guess I'm missing a few details on whether these are going to be sort of universal or tailored to particular chains or algorithms. I think it said SHA-256 is part of it, but um, we can fill that in. And the second part uh, of this news that I think is really important and hopefully will be exciting for people who aren't even involved in crypto uh, is that Intel says that the architecture of this chip uh, means that it won't make added demands on its supply chain for conventional uh, graphics chips, which currently, especially for Ethereum, um, are putting a crunch on things that people who play video games on their computers want. Um, so for, for at least the last two years or so, uh, prices on uh, video game graphics cards have really been inflated on the secondary market because people want to use them to mine ETH. Um, and price action has probably reduced some pressure there over the last few months, but having a, additional options for mining or even better superior options is gonna shift some demand back to those gamers so they should be happy. Um, Will, I am curious to hear from you first because you are our mining specialist here. Um, can you talk a little bit about what having one kind of chip that's a thousand times more efficient than another could do to basically the mining market? Totally, yeah, this, this story has been kind of eking out for the last few weeks. Seems like we got some new details this morning uh, from this article. It looks like it's a thousand percent more efficient than current GPUs on the market. People haven't mined with GPUs Bitcoin in about a decade, actually. They've been using specific uh -huh. yeah. circuits called ASICs, and those machines are extremely powerful. It doesn't ah, okay. seem that Intel's actually going after that market. They seem to be going after a market that actually doesn't really exist anymore, the GPU mining for Bitcoin, which is pretty interesting that they're going that route for a few reasons. The first of all is 
they seem to be catering to like a home mining angle. And they go, of course, a lot of this is extremely speculative. There's not a lot of details out there right now. But it seems to be like a home mining exercise where they're saying, hey, there's a constituent of the market that wants to mine from home and support the network that way, much in the same way a lot of people run a Bitcoin node. And they're going to create a miner that you can run at your house. It's very energy efficient, probably won't earn very much money, but it will support the network in the same way that someone running a node at their home supports the Bitcoin network by enforcing the rules. That seems to be what they're going after. The second part about this that's really interesting is the participants in this. So we saw Square uh, or Block rather now, Grid, which is a big Bitcoin miner out there, and then Argo, which is another big Bitcoin miner out there. They're bringing in these parties that seemingly I wouldn't say that I would suppose that they'd be a part of this at, at first glance, especially Block. But Block has really made a push for making Bitcoin part of an everyday person's life. Think of Cash App, think of the Lightning Network on Cash App, and their recent endeavors into the Lightning SDK kit, basically allowing any developer to implement Lightning into their app. Same thing they're doing with ASICs, it seems here. They, they talked about launching an ASIC earlier this year, or at least exploring the option of building an ASIC talked about building a hardware wallet. It seems that the route they're choosing is this home mining angle where you're able to plug in a GPU, support the network, and mine Bitcoin at a very, very low percentage and probably a very low profitability percentage in order to just support the Bitcoin network in general. So that's my two takeaways from this. Naomi, I want to throw it up to you, though. It's pretty exciting news. There you have it. Let's take a look at this article. The independent chairman and lead director of Intel Corporation, S. Israq. I hope I'm saying your name. Just spent over close to or close to half a million dollars buying uh, stock. That's always a bullish sign. I paid uh, forty-five eleven per share to buy forty four hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars worth of the stock. Uh, it's a very decent purchase to their minds. Uh, the the authors of this article suggest that this is a massive bull play, and whenever you see insider buying, it's always so it's a good thing, right? As opposed to insider selling, uh, especially if you're long on something like this, you don't want to hear that news. It's never good. But um, you know, anything can happen, right? So before we jump into the chart, I thought I would showcase this article. It, it means something uh, to the minds of an investor. See the shares bought compared to the shares sold. So they are buying up uh, Intel. And that's always a good sign. Like, again, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but uh, insiders own, you know, not even 1%. Is, you know, it's it's not a big purchase, but it, it, it is making a little bit of waves. So let's jump into the chart. And we see here on my trading view, uh, taking a look at Intel. And I'm going to back it up a little bit to um, establish some levels of support, which is what I like to do when I'm, Doing my technical analysis, people have um, their ways of how they do technical technical analysis. As I do more research, I find that uh, at least just for me, um, find some levels of support around the uh, 48 level. Uh, below 50 is more specifically just to be real specific. Uh, the 47 to 48 dollar range is what I'm finding um, down here. Touched 45 dollars uh, last week and. Um, yeah, so those are some levels of support. So uh, it, anything can happen. Again, this is just my take on reading the chart. It can go any way from here. I'm not uh, predicting anything. However, I would like to see it establish um, and find some. Now I'll find a level of resistance, which looks to be around this 55 to $56 range. And uh, as trading continues, I will keep an eye on this range for sure. And I don't uh, expect anything to, for for it to just all of a sudden just skyrocket unless there's just some really crazy news that comes out about some performance or some deals which we understand that the White House made a deal with Intel however that's already been priced in I believe however look let's just treat this level that 50 that 55 dollar range as resistance if it doubles tops there, I can see it going back down to this level of the 47s, the 46, the 45s. However, if it pops through 56, it makes 55, 56 its level of support. Then the next level that I'm looking at is in the 60s. Uh, more specifically, uh, let me back up here to, yeah, this most recent high. Um, 
which is if you were trading and if you got out of this position, good for you. But the high, the the mid to high 60s, 66, 67 dollar range, I'll be looking at that as a level of uh, the next level of resistance. So I'll keep you, keeping an eye on those key levels there. That's all. That's uh, that's my chart on Intel. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for your time. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I really do appreciate it. It helps people find the channel. If there's another company, ETF, IPO, cryptocurrency that you would like for me to research, just drop it in the comment section below. Intel is part of my M1 Finance series on my channel. Thank you for your time. Have a good week. Take care.